Hi everyone, this is Dan and this is Ragnarok Volume 1 by Myung Jin Lee, uh, published by Tokyo Pop. And this book is uh, interesting uh, and probably for those of you guys looking at at first you're thinking, oh is this like a ma manga or a manga, right? And uh, actually, no, this isn't. As you can tell, this book is uh, going uh, left to right and uh, th that and other reasons. but. This book is actually what uh, a genre of comics that I haven't done on this channel yet, and it's called a manhwa. These are Korean comics. And what's kind of interesting about this particular book, by the way, and by the way, it's not worth it to collect this series. Uh, this series has been on hiatus since uh, 2001, I believe. The creator for this series, I think he went to go... Uh, he went to go do his mandatory uh, service. Like in Korea, you're required, like all, I think, men are required to go serve in the military for about two years or something like that. Uh, you know, got to go watch the <laughs> the, uh, the North Koreans <laughs> for a while. And uh, I think after he came back, he decided he was going to help out on the video game series, which I think he still works on to this day, uh, which some of you may be familiar with if you're more into video games. There's a... Uh, sort of old-school uh, MMO called Ragnarok Online, uh, made by a Korean video game company. Anyhow, this manhwa was published uh, back in the early aughts, and I remember it very fondly because it was in the Barnes and & Nobles and Brookstones and all the bookstores at the time, uh, basically on the same uh, shelves as manga that was coming out. And I liked it because I didn't have to read backwards. And when I was in high school, uh, first reading or getting into this stuff, uh, I was very annoyed uh, by the transition uh, from the older published manga where they would actually mirror stuff so that you could read it left to right. And then the later versions where they would uh, instead just keep it the way it is in Japanese and you would read it right to left. Uh, so Ragnarok was one of the few books left on the shelf around the time that I was really getting into this stuff uh, that was left to right, and that's because it is a manhwa. And uh, Koreans, uh, for those of you who don't know, they read left to right, like, I don't know, most of the world technically. <laughs> and so for, for them, when uh, there weren't that many manhwas available, I think there's a lot more nowadays, though... The Koreans are much more fond of web comics and, in general, reading on uh, tablets, smartphones, computers, etc. Uh, they don't uh, necessarily, they don't push uh, published work that much. Uh, not that it isn't available; it's just uh, it's not as uh, well known, at least in Korean comics, Korean manhwa, as say stuff that's available on the internet. Uh, which is typically what Koreans are really big into. I believe the uh, Koreans own, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, I forget, like the web comic, the major web comic website is owned by uh, a Korean company. And most of the, the biggest web comics in general in the world are Korean, actually, uh, which tells you a lot about uh, Korean comics and how far they've come uh, compared to the. Uh, their Japanese counterparts and really their, uh, their, their American and European counterparts as well. Uh, very fascinating. Uh, I do plan to eventually go over some of the more popular manhwa on the channel, though I think it would probably be a different video since a lot of them are technically online. So it's kind of difficult to go over them compared to published work like this. Anyway, I kind of babbled on along. Ragnarok, this particular book, is essentially a fantasy uh, uh, story and heavily based off of Norse mythology. Uh, this book, not to be confused, by the way, by the uh, Walt Simonson Ragnarok, which is also a great comic, which I need to go over one day. Uh, this one, though, puts a very, very Asian twist to it. And uh, Manhwa, and in this one in particular, uh, obviously take a lot of influence from manga. Uh, in, in general, Korean, Japanese culture, uh, though never ever get them confused from one another uh, with each other, though there is a lot of influence uh, between the two. And uh, you can see it here with the incredible speed lines, the triangular chins, uh, the <laughs> very, very busty uh, women right here. This is Fenris Fenrir in this particular story is a woman. And 
Here she goes off to uh, basically try to capture a Baldur Sword Sentinel Breeze in order to restore her memory. And she runs into a Valkyrie, Sarah Irene, who attempts to uh, murder her with the magics and the monsters. Uh, meanwhile, in another place, the other two characters and the main character shown here, uh, Chaos and Iris, are uh, busy hunting face worms right here for bounty money. And uh, it kind of goes back and forth. A lot of like the first half of this book is really a ton of action, which makes me wonder how this was originally published. Uh, like I actually kind of wonder if this was so published 1999 or 1998 by Daiwan. Uh, wonder if it was actually a internet book at first. I'm not sure. Anyway, the the don't uh, collect this by the way. Not well. You can if you want to. It's probably pretty cheap. Uh, there's ten volumes of it. Uh, it has been discontinued, and I don't think the author ever really will come back to it. Uh, just because he's probably busy making way more money off of uh, video games uh, than doing this stuff, which is unfortunate because this is pretty, uh, it's very solid action art. I, I kind of dig it a lot. And when, I remember uh, reading this book and noticing it was very manga inspired, but still kind of different from a lot of the other stuff. And you can see these are Korean uh, lettering right here. I always know it's Korean because Koreans always have like circles with slashes. Circles with slashes <laughs> is usually what I see. Uh, I, again, like I, I've told many people, I grew up with a lot of different Asian cultures, so I kind of uh, uh, recognize a lot of this stuff. So Iris and Chaos, by the way, they end up uh, using some spell and able to uh, on uh, on Chaos's sword in order to take out this worm. You also get introduced to this character. Um, uh, Lydia, who is sort of the thief here, and you can kind of see as you go through this book uh, why the author eventually uh, went on to go work on video games, because there's a lot of video game concepts, like a character being a mage, one being a swordsman, this chick being the thief, right? And uh, a lot of that obviously can, uh, you know, that kind of uh, creativity and imagination can be used to go uh, to do. Uh, to do video games, right? Which is uh, technically, at least, uh, especially back then when this was going on, uh, was very, very lucrative, right? Still technically lucrative today, certainly more lucrative than uh, comics. And you get uh, introduced to these Valkyries, right? There's a lot of influence of other, uh, other like European mythology. So here she has like these elf characteristics. Uh, but at the same time, there there's also a lot of influence uh, a lot of Asian influence as well. She's got the Norns. This first volume, by the way, just introduces a crap load of characters, and you just kind of, you kind of fly through it. When I was uh, younger, uh, I got kind of like really obsessed with all of these characters. I thought they were like the coolest thing ever. Um, and I think also this was one of the first uh, big manwas that I uh, read. Uh, or really just non-American comic books that I read and I was just kind of blown away by the art and uh, the uh, just uh, just the, the zaniness and the, the vastness of the world. I also had not read any Norse mythology so I didn't know uh, what any of this stuff was or how much of this was really the uh, creators ripping from a bunch of other stuff uh, compared to the uh, compared to the original Norse mythology. Which brings up another thing that I wanted to mention, right? So the creator right here, uh, Myung Jin Lee, uh, created this in uh, uh, back in the late 90s. Uh, but when it was brought over for republication in the United States, it was Richard Knack who did the rewriting. Uh, which is another thing. I don't, uh, obviously I can't read Korean. I don't know the original Korean uh, manhwa what the direct translation is for Ragnarok. Uh, but uh, a lot of the older manga and, and manhwa of this area from both uh, Tokyo Pop, Viz, etc., uh, they typically hired rewriters a lot of times, especially if uh, the original source material was deemed to be excessively uh, Japanese or uh, Korean, basically. Very difficult for Western audiences to understand with a direct translation. Sometimes I was deemed. 
Uh, a good example of this was the original uh, Naruto. Uh, was the, the first ten volumes were technically, you know, rewritten by Joe Duffy. Uh, for those of you who don't remember her from uh, Marvel Comics, DC Comics fame, and uh, there's a big debate uh, on, you know, even to this day, right, about uh, how much these translated works should be rewritten by you know translators and editors and how much should be left as is for the reader to figure out and interpret the cultural meaning and whatnot i'm kind of of the opinion of uh well in the case of this work i think the rewriter here richard knack did a pretty good job because i remember just genuinely uh enjoying this adaptation of uh, ragnarok uh, from tokyo pop like, I remember all the volumes I had, I really, really liked it a lot. And at the same time, I also remember very fondly enjoying Joe Duffy's uh, sort of um, recreate or uh, retranslation of Naruto. The first 10 volumes of Naruto are just freaking godlike. Some of the best freaking manga ever. Uh, at the same time, there's a lot of like newer translations coming out where. Uh, the the retranslators and um, sort of uh, official publishers are dramatically changing the story and the intention of the authors and it gets to a point where it's actually difficult nowadays to justify buying stuff from viz and others because you basically have uh, translators with agendas uh, often not political agendas uh, and they are changing basically entire characters and stories to suit what they feel is appropriate uh, rather than keeping with the spirit and the intention of the original uh, author work, right? And that's why you'll, you'll probably see, uh, for those of you who are manga heads, you'll probably see a lot of people say don't even bother buying official translations, just get it off the internet through scans, pirate, blah, 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 blah. And Unfortunately, at least in the manga community, not only is that obviously the most affordable way to uh, get the story, it's also the most accurate and honestly the most appropriate way now at this point to get it because there's really no accountability or control held at like Viz and many of the other translators, Dark Horse, etc. They really, you know, you really kind of have to like cross your fingers and hope you get a translator editor that really cares about the original intention from the author uh, from Japan, Korea, etc. Right? And it's one of those things that also worries me even about uh, European comics as well, uh, which is how do you know that an English translator isn't screwing with stuff, you know? And it's, it's, a, it's, it's unfortunate and honestly when you're dealing with international comics, you know, the, the best solution is obviously go figure out how to read. Korean, Japanese, Russian, French, etc. Right, uh, but it's also kind of sad that it's kind of come to that where you know the the for lack of a better word the culture war is to the point where we're busy messing with other people's works from other parts of the country or the world just because it doesn't suit our whatever narrow worldview that we you know want people to have right, but. Anyhow, yeah, there, there's also this character right here, Skurai, uh, who is basically an Elric ripoff. <laughs> Though to be fair, Elric is technically based off of uh, Norwegian Finnish legend as well. He's got a sword that is cursed and talks to him and uh, thirsts the blood of, uh, of others and whatnot. You even got a really cool thing right here where after he wastes this dude, uh, we get introduced to these two ladies here who are Moonen and Hugen. Uh, which, uh, for those of you who remember, like Thor and uh, and Ragnarok and whatnot, those are the two Raven messengers of Odin. Uh, here they go, uh, telling this guy to go to the city of Phaon to uh, to meet great warriors right here. In which case, all of our heroes all end up. Everyone's kind of converging on Phaon, uh, leading into sort of a uh, uh, a climax in the second volume. Man, I gotta go find that second volume, by the way. It's it's actually a really dope freaking uh, volume. I enjoy it. I also get uh, this character, <laughs> Loki. <laughs> Which is another kind of cool character. But yeah, man, this uh, this book... I uh, wanted to kind of mention, uh, show it off right here. Again, there's not really a, a point to collecting this unless you're curious or you get it for stupidly cheap. 
uh, just because the, the series probably never will get finished just because the author is uh, probably too busy making money off of video games. <laughs> but there's 10 volumes of it, and if you find it for cheap or you find it online, uh, give it a try. It's like really cool stuff. Uh, always dig the art in this story. Uh, it's, uh, and if, you, if you're kind of like, if you like Thor and you also like this kind of stylized uh, Korean manhwa manga style art, uh, then check it out, man. It's uh, it's good stuff. Uh, anyhow, let me get to this. So I just pencil this guy. I'm probably going to ink. Uh, so this is Chaos, the main character. Probably going to ink and uh, color it later and put it up on a community post. I also did, by the way, like some of you guys remember, this is uh, Elise Stillwater from the previous video. Uh, I also did Paragon, but uh, Peregrine, I should say. Uh, but I'm not super happy with this. I might still ink it. I just... I got really annoyed with her costume, uh, but I might ink it later and, uh, you know, color it later and put it up on community posts. So still drawing, just uh, kind of taking my time with it right here. <laughs> Anyhow, guys, that's the video. Let me know what you think. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. If you got any comments on the Korean manhwa Ragnarok, uh, leave it down below, and I will see you next time.